stop. Just to, um, uh, half of our people are still on the tour somewhere, but we're going to get started just so that uh, it doesn't get late for everyone and those of us who are going to head off for a drink, mm -hmm. including yourselves, I'm sure, <laughs> then we can. So um, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten. Vikaeus. Yes. Vikaeus. Vikaeus. was the last name. Yeah. And you can get to the shop. Okay, so without further ado, I think we'll just get started and then uh, the, there'll be after the presentation, I'm sure, an opportunity for questions and clarifications. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you, comrades, friends. Um, thank you so much for inviting us to speak at the Global Labour Institute on this auspicious day when Greece, uh, Greek people woke up to find that effectively they had brought about a revolution in their country. <coughs> 60% uh, of the Greek people said no to further austerity, no to the Troika's imposition of the so-called reforms, reforms of which would have devastated further an already devastating humanitarian crisis after five years of austerity. And by world standards, you may well look at Greece with its crystal clear waters and oligarchs sailing around in their massive yachts, <coughs> and you would think to yourself, crisis, what crisis? People are far worse off in the slums of India and, uh, and in the uh, refugee camps on the border of Syria and sub-Saharan Africa. And, and you'd be right in thinking that. But that doesn't mean that what's taking place in Greece is not a humanitarian crisis. That doesn't mean that what's happening in Greece has no relevance for the rest of the world, for us who are campaigning and resisting or not resisting the neoliberal he hegemony of globalised capitalism. <clears throat> so, can you imagine how Dikaios and I had to present for today? We had to do two presentations, effectively. One that would say uh, yes, and one that would say no. <laughs> Thanks to the Greek people, we threw the one away that we didn't want, yeah. and we can place you. <laughs> <laughs> and we can face you with some optimism and some hope. Now, I'm no expert in Greek affairs, and I probably should be booted off this table for pretending to be one. I'm an alumni of that other working class college, Ruskin College in Oxford, where I completed an MA in International Labour and Trade Union Studies last year. And my topic of research was whether the trade unions are an opportunity through which Labour can mobilise a counter-hegemonic response to neoliberal capitalism. And my specific research was on Greece, comparing the mobilisation there, there with the lack of mobilisation in the UK, and trying to get some perspective. And this was in the time of the Arab Spring, and in the time of the uprisings in Egypt, uh, the, the Spaniards, and also obviously the Greek mobilizations. So I went to Athens and interviewed a range of participants from various trade unions who all said the same thing. And that was in late 2014, that after almost five years of austerity, and despite 30 general strikes and mass mobilizations around the country, that they felt that they were defeated. Those people in the squares that we saw on television and the news, they were not the trade unions, as I had expected. The trade unions were part of the problem, part of the neoliberal capitalist system, and not the solution. And now that they were defeated, when I went to meet them, they were waiting on the Messiah, the Messiah being Alexis Tsipras. Uh, he was the new prime minister elected in January, uh, and fortunately today remains the prime minister after the no vote last night. So I thought, how can this be that these mass mobilizations were not formed by trade unions? I didn't understand this. And when I got there, my theory, my thesis, was dead before I'd even begun to research it. Who were all those hundreds of thousands of people who were protesting in the squares and getting tear gas and arrested and beaten up and even killed? If they weren't trade unionists, well, who were they? I have to give you a quick lesson in industrial relations and law in Greece, just so that you can see the structure and understand where this was coming from. It takes 22 people to create a union in Greece. That's by Greek law. Most employers are small and medium enterprises, which by their own definition are less than 20 people. So it's very difficult to form a trade union in, in an enterprise. Only 2.8% of all enterprises have a trade union because of this problem with this law. And in 2010, when austerity started in earnest, trade union density in Greece stood at approximately 60% of salaried <coughs> workers. Now these are predominantly public sector workers. Most of the trade unionists employed in the private sector are not trade. Uh, most of the trade unionists, people employed in the pri private sector, uh, are not trade unionists or members of. We then had the structure of the trade unions, which I think is relevant. So there are three levels within the Greek trade union movement: the first, the second, and the third. <coughs> Here comes the. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll give it a moment then. <laughs> 
Thank you. Come in. Welcome. Thank you. Come in. Take a seat. Plenty of seats up the front as well. <coughs> Okay, any more? This is great. Because you're all late, you have to buy us each a drink. <laughs> so the more coming in, the merrier. Please come in, sit down. There's some more seats at the front. I think we've got it, Jade. Excellent. More? We're very sorry that we're so late. <laughs> I just say, if anybody's mobile phone goes off while we're here, you also have to buy me another drink, so I intend to get very drunk tonight. <laughs> Not like last night, huh? It was that... that Celebration that we had, oh my dear. Um, I'm not going to start again. I was just giving a contextual analysis of the Greek trade union movement to get some understanding about uh, how the mass mobilizations and the um, the, the uh, struggles against austerity take place within quite a specific industrial relations scene. So I was talking just briefly about the fact that it's very difficult to actually form a trade union within Greece because you have to have more than 22 people in the trade union in, uh, in the enterprise in order to be able to uh, form the unions. But most businesses in Greece are small and medium enterprises which by their own definition are less than 20 people. So it's particularly difficult to form a trade union. Of those trade unions that there are, we have three levels of the trade unions. You would have, um, for example, an enterprise union in what we call the first level or if I was an archaeologist or an auditor in the public sector, I would form be part of the Athens Union of Archaeologists or the Athens Union of Auditors, which is quite different than in the UK where you would form one big public sector union like Unison, where I work. So that's on the first level. On the second level, I w my union would then join a federation. So, for example, the Labour Institute in Athens is a federation of trade unions within Athens. And we would, we would make uh, nominations and representations to that second level. And so these craft unions, very small craft unions, come together in a federation on the second level. And on the third level, they have a confederations called the GSSE and uh, Adivi. And GSA represents the public sector workers and Adivi the private sector. I've got that the wrong way around. Other way around, sorry. Uh, and though they feed in their representatives then also into the political classes, similar to the Labour link within the U uh, UK trade union movement. Uh, and those political parties were the very parties who were in government during the five years of austerity. So very close links between the political parties and the trade unions. I would say that GSA recommended its members to vote yes in yesterday's referendum. Yes to more austerity. Edidi, from my perspective, didn't seem to know what to recommend. Uh, so it was a bit, a bit confused. But the point is this, that trade unions, in their very nature, are not revolutionary. This is a shock. I thought they were. They will have in their manifestos or in their rule books nothing in there about overthrowing a political system or about bringing about democratic socialism. They are there to protect their members. They're there <coughs> to protect the terms and conditions and protect the jobs. And that's exactly what the trade unions did in the five years of austerity. So back to the last five years, what were the trade unions doing in Greece? The government agreed two crucial memorandums of understanding in uh, March 2010, which were the immediate measures for the protection of the economy. Cuts to wages in the public sector. Even if there was an agreement between the employer and the employee for an improvement in wages, that was not made possible. There was a shrinking of employment in the public sector as they um, not only made cutbacks and froze jobs. Uh, there was an increase in VAT and consumption tax. And in May 2010, more wage cuts, more cuts to pensions, enforcing the flexibility of the labour market, <coughs> huge cuts to young people's wages, which was agreed with the trade unions, and also cuts to <coughs> the private sector as well, not just the public sector jobs. And at this time, you might recall that the IMF was saying that there was too much inflation in the labour market and that labour costs in Greece were way out of kilter. And the way out of the crisis was to lower wages and to lower inflation. They also then went further and they abolished the holiday pay that was given to workers, which was a 13-month salary on top of their salary when they went and took a holiday. They made dismissal legislation easier. They cut overtime rates so that people didn't get paid uh, increased for work for working overtime. There were more cuts to the minimum wage for young people, and then they abolished the Central Arbitration Committee, which is the arbitration committee that is supposed to arbitrate between uh, disputing employer and employee. Mm. So if there was a dispute, there was nowhere to go. And most importantly, they ended the collective <coughs> bargaining rights. 
And there were specific attacks on groups of workers as well, such as railway workers. We went to dismiss 2,350 workers. Following resistance to this, they kept them on in their jobs, but they redistributed them around the country in other, um, in other areas of the public sector. And why did they do this? Because they wanted to weaken labour. Private sector, the teachers' union, they were very strong and very well organised. And the Communist Party, you think, why would they do this? Set up another private sector teachers' union to compete with the first. And then the bosses set up a third private sector teachers' union to compete with that as well. What's this about? Fragmentation and division of organised labour. And further privatisation, as we well know, and so on and so on. That's only half of the changes that were introduced through these memoranda. And I haven't got the time to detail all of them. But the social consequences of this, we saw unemployment at 27%, youth unemployment at 52%, so one in every two uh, young person is out of work. Long-time unemployment rose up to 75%. 1.3 million people living in households without <coughs> anyone employed in them at all. 40% of households have one person in unemployment without a job. And uh, whilst, if you're not able to work for 50 days of a year, you lose your access to your medical insurance. So you cannot go and get your medical treatment that you need. And as for the undeclared work, those people who are working precarious jobs, you know, under the radar, who knows how, how uh, the extent of that. And who represents these people? Well, the trade unions don't, because the trade unions represent their members, by and large. <coughs> so where do these people go to in a crisis? <coughs> Well, the trade unions, they did try, but they were very weak and very bureaucratic, like some trade unions in this country as well. And, as I said, linked quite closely to the political parties. Not all of them. There was some resistance by some of the trade unions. The Electricity Union, for example, did a campaign of reinstating people's electricity, those people who were facing having their electricity cut because they couldn't afford to pay. And the teachers' unions were mobilising, and the bus workers' unions were mobilising, and the water unions and the post office. And when the public sector <coughs> broadcaster was closed down for a year, the workers in there occupied the building and continued transmitting for a year without any salary at all. So there were some marvellous struggles against the austerity. And some resistance, but it wasn't that that brought the people out on the squares. So there I was in Athens, my thesis was ruined, I was totally depressed, I had nowhere to go. Unfortunately, I met my dear friend here, Dikaios. Dikaios works for Solidarity for All, an absolutely critical lifeblood in this crisis within the Greek community. And I'm sure you don't want to hear any more from me, because we want to hear directly from him and his work that he does for the people of Greece. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would like to thank you for the opportunity you give me to speak to your summer school about some aspects of the situation in Greece. I'd like to apologize for my bad English and also I have a pain in the knee, so I <laughs> may be sick uh, as we will talk. Um, I'm here as uh, I'm working in Solidarity for All, which is an institution uh, that is a result of uh, a growing grassroots solidarity movement that developed in Greece in this period of the memoranda. This is the one phase of solidarity for all because the other phase, solidarity for all, it was a decision of the party of Syriza of how we'll work inside this grassroots movement. Solidarity for all, it, on the one hand, is the the, sa the, the same a solidarity structure. What I mean a solidarity structure. <coughs> there were people that they had no food, they had uh, their electricity cut, they, had, uh, they, uh, they couldn't go to the hospital. At the first hand, we, ha we have a front line that is talking with the people what is the problem, and we try to connect these people as a person to the small solidarity structures that exist in every neighborhood. We say, where are you living? You're living there. Oh, there, there is a social clinic. There is a social pharmacy. There are some people that make in a collective kitchen. There are some people that they give food, but you will work maybe in the administration for some time, and uh, you will help them if they want it the other time. And we try to connect the people that have <coughs> the problem 
with the structures that exist inside the communities. But uh, sometimes, and I must say all the times, maybe we must organize the uh, movement uh, answers to some problems. Because there were people that their houses uh, had to be taken from the banks. And we had to go in the courts and to create a, a problem in, uh, in the courts. Uh, so we stopped the, uh, the, the whole thing because there is a law that says that when you have the decision to take house, there must be quiet and all the things. Uh, uh, they must not... Uh, think uh, in this way so many times uh, we organized the break of these uh, things and this is only a small uh, part uh, this all in the title it is because in the beginning of crisis there were fascist movements in Greece and fascist parties that tried to explore to, exp to they tried to to exploit the situation and uh, created uh, what they called solidarity only for Greeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were uh, giving food and they were giving blood, but they were not, uh, they prohibited from the immigrants that we had in Greece to take this food mm -hmm. and even worse to take the blood. And uh, we had classes against us. Uh, the, the doctors and the hospital said what is this, what are you doing uh, we had to make political campaign to stop what the fascists did about solidarity only for Greek and this is the reason why the name is solidarity for all this means that we don't accept these divisions that what that the solidarity work that we do it's for all. We don't look if someone is an immigrant or someone has this origins are from Greece. And uh, I must tell you that we won this fight and this fascist solidarity now doesn't exist in Greece. Uh, uh, they, uh, they, are, uh, they are not there. Uh, we eliminated this uh, threat. On the other hand, a solidarity for all is... Uh, partly a creation of Syriza party, and I must say that clearly, because uh, Syriza party didn't want it to, to continue the, the, the tradition mm -hmm. of political clientism we have in Greece, because uh, uh, there is such a, a tradition in Greece. You, you vote uh, if someone's find your work, or someone is making a small job for you, and you feel like a client, a political client, and then you have to vote him. And uh, Syriza party didn't want it to continue this tradition. So uh, didn't want it to give food to the people like the people are beggars and I give you some food today and some food tomorrow. Uh, there, there must be a different organization of that. So Syriza decided to help the structures that the people were building from below, and I'll speak about that a little uh, later, and try to, to sustain this, um, these structures. So every MP had to give the 20% of the salary to a fund, that it is solidarity for all, that don't uh, ha accepts uh, questions or uh, what every person want, but if a structure says, uh, can you help me find a kitchen? Can you help me find uh, uh, a bed for a social medicine house? Uh, we tried to find it from the others. We sent messages. We had created an electronic platform that the people can communicate one another and help themselves at first. And if uh, it's possible, we, uh, we arrange people that uh, go to the countryside, they find producers who give uh, their products in lower prices and we buy massively these products and we give them but again to the structures, not to the every person, uh, but to the people who they are, uh, who are uniting the people and uh, they work as a movement. The, the, at the time that they give the food or that they prepare the food, they are going outside and they fight for the reason. I, I will give you an example to understand what I say. Uh, 
we set social clinics and pharmacies. In the beginning, there were about uh, four or five, and now they are 47. Uh, these uh, pharmacies and clinics, at the time that the older government closed the hospitals, were in the front line of the demonstrations not to close the hospitals. Uh, and they were making a great job in the neighborhood for the public <coughs> health, for the, uh, for the public health from the state. They didn't want to say close the hospitals, we will make a social hospital. They were fighting, they were creating the social hospital, that the, this was for free for the people, but at the same time they were fighting to keep the, the open the, the hospitals. So, uh, maybe I gave you a small um, idea of what Solidarity for All is doing. And I would like now to continue from some things that Leoni said uh, before. The first is that after the, the Greek parliament uh, passed the laws of, uh, uh, of the austerity and the restructuring problem, programs, you must understand that we had a very difficult situation. We had a dictatorship inside a democracy. I don't know if uh, you have uh, an experience of this kind of thing, but what was what uh, happening in the reality in Greece? And democracy was only something in front. In the back, we had an economic dictatorship. And... Uh, the decisions were not uh, really in the parliament. So, uh, in that uh, situation and in that period, uh, a big, a massive resistance uh, after one year, because the first year it was a shock, but the second year there's been a massive resistance. First, there was a resistance in the workplaces. In the workplaces, there have been repeated general strikes, more than 20 general strikes. There were numerous fights in workplaces for everything, for against closures in the hospital, strikes, not to close the hospital demonstrations, against the changes in the law, what Leone says about the young people that they saw their salary to be cut. Uh, the people that they were working in the shops, because the, these changes, especially for the young people, mainly the young people were working in the shops, that the, <coughs> they were influenced by, by these changes in the law, and except the shops in the factories. The, the young people in the factories and in the shops were, had the main problem. And uh, there were many fights. There were dismissals and cuts, especially in the public se sector, because it was the first time in Greece that uh, they uh, suspended, they threw out people from the public se sector, because the, the job in the public sector in Greece was in the Constitution. You couldn't uh, throw away a, a person that was working for the state. But uh, at the period of memorandum, this changed, and many people were get uh, suspended. Uh, so there was uh, a, 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 a huge movement uh, in many places and in many forms. There were occupation of central offices, there were strikes, there were demonstrations. But after two crucial uh, fights, uh, the, the movement uh, got back. Uh, the movement uh, had a big problem. This, were, this was the strike of the metal workers in Eleniki Halivurgia. It was a very big strike that uh, uh, the workers did for a lot, uh, for a long of time. But in the end, uh, we didn't won. And this was very important because there was a lot of, of support of all the working class and all the people in this strike. And at the second hand, it was the strike of the workers in the metro uh, at the beginning of 2013 that they crashed this strike, I must say, like a military way. 
because I was in front in the morning and I saw an operation of the police to close the streets and to go inside the places that the workers were and they acted like it was an army that was going to conquer a place and uh, uh, after this two defeat and, and then they make a, a law um, I don't know the word when we are in the army the, the, the law that the army uh, Marshall Law, really. <laughs> I don't know exactly the work, but all these people continue to work with Marshall Law. Uh, and uh, it was a treason if they didn't go to work. And this law was working till uh, just a little uh, with the new government, it seems. All these people, they worked under Marshall Law uh, for all these uh, months. So, one thing. Uh, so the, the working movement uh, le uh, turned uh, the, the working the resistance they came to a place that it was very difficult to go more after that another second form of the massive resistance was uh, that uh, of uh, the movement of the squares it's like the indignatos in Spain a lot of people where they were concentrated in the big squares, especially in the center square of Athens, that it's Syntagma Square, and they were um, mobilizing against the government. But also these great, great gatherings were attacked by the police, forcefully and brutally, and it is a question that we don't have dead people, that we didn't have dead people in these uh, classes. Uh, because uh, the attack was vicious against uh, the people from the police at this period. So the people couldn't stay in Sintagma Square and they went to the neighborhoods and they tried to create what we called uh, uh, popular assemblies, that these popular assemblies began to create this solidarity work. Uh, this in the beginning uh, came from below for, for what reason? You had a, a popular assembly in a small place in your neighborhood. Somebody was coming and said, I, they cut my electricity. So the people, five people, two, ten, they were going and they reconnect the electricity of these uh, uh, people. Uh, <laughs> I can tell you a story because I went with some other and we reconnected the electricity. The woman came to Arcas and when we, we left her house, we saw her husband uh, in the window and I asked her, what's the job of your husband? He said, he's a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have reconnected illegally the, <laughs> the electricity <laughs> in his house. You can understand what was the situation. And... Um, mm -hmm. For, for, uh, from this came that we have our house, we have the problem, we are in the courts, uh, what's happening, we don't have the, the medicines. So this was the time that the people tried and began to form these solidarity structures in the neighborhoods. Uh, Leone, I think, gave you the the numbers or, and, uh, and what really was the situation. So what happened is that uh, from 180 self-organized solidarity structures in September of 2012, today we have uh, 400 that uh, are uh, in all the areas of the social life. They, uh, they are especially in health and food but also they are in education with social institutes, they are in um, uh, civilization, conservatoires, <laughs> let's say that, where people uh, learn uh, musical uh, instruments. And uh, they, the, the, the beautiful thing in these structures is that they are uh, keep on working and make the decision as open assemblies, they, the people that they work there they meet every week and they say what we are doing and they organize their work by meetings by, and this is very nice because they have problems that but they 
they pass these problems with the discussion and uh, with the participation. I must say that the use of money in these structures is very, it's very limited and it's only to cover some bills and to cover uh, other uh, rents in, in some parts that they have the rent. And uh, they create a different kind of, of social relationship between people. And uh, I wanted to say that because it's, it's not only that there was a movement that organized the people in their needs, which, which is very important. It was also a movement that played a role in the participation of the people in the, uh, in the social um, and, and, and in the political scene. Because the people, they work in these structures, they are in some way out of the political scene and working in the solidarity structures and debating what they will do and try to help and support the other parts of the society, uh, they are engaged uh, politically. What was very important uh, was that in 2014, uh, something that was uh, a, a step forward, it is the connection between the workplaces and these solidarity structures. This is mainly what I want to say in our discussion. Because <coughs> what happened is that uh, in uh, three very important things, there was a joint action of solidarity structures and the working movement. And this is a very new and very important thing. The first was a joint campaign for the people that they had cancer and they didn't have, they were, uh, un, uh, they were without the security, the health, insurance. the health insurance to go to a hospital. So it was, uh, uh, we created a movement that it had doctors, people that were working in the hospital as nurses and all this the patients and the social solidarity groups, the social clinics and pharmacies, with demonstrations outside the hospitals, with strikes, with uh, a very big publicity to change the situation. And we want this, every public hospital in Greece is open to anyone who has a problem of cancer and can take the medicine without nothing, without the papers, it was a great victory, uh, this one, and uh, this, uh, and it was after this uh, joint uh, mobilization. A second uh, thing of uh, union between working movement and social structures was the great fight of the cleaners of the Ministry of Finance, where the cleaners set a small tent. Uh, outside the Ministry of Finance, more than 40 uh, solidarity groups in the food that they were active in Athens, they were uh, preparing food every day for the cleaners, so they sustained the cleaners in their tent every day with the food, another structure from this neighborhood, from the other. Many artists passed the solidarity uh, from solidarity work and um, helped uh, the cleaners. And uh, I must say that it's very, that uh, I don't know exactly the word, but uh, it reminds me some traditions of the working movement that we had lost for years in Greece. What? One cleaners were in the last phase of their struggle and it was sure that we will win. Uh, we had the Syrian refugees uh, and, and small children from Syria that uh, they came to Sidakma Square because the people they didn't have where to go. The cleaners uh, prepared the sandwiches and the other food that Solidarity for All gave the material and they were sitting in front of their tent and they were and they were working hours and hours to prepare the food to give to the Syrian refugees 
uh, that the, the others, the big politicians and the journalists, were saying, who are these people? They are dirty. What are they doing in Sindagma Square? And this woman, that they had no money, that they had no life, that they were out of a job, most of them more than 55 years, they were preparing food for these people. I think this was a very uh, important uh, thing. Uh, the, the third is what happened in, uh, around the, the people that they are working in the television and the radio station that created a, a movement of solidarity in all Greece because they had the 17 station. It was on, not only the central station that was broadcasting the, from the television from Athens. They had the radio station and television station in 17 cities around Greece. So it was a, a very important uh, uh, thing, uh, this uh, this mix of the people that they're working there and the solidarity structures. I want to go to the end uh, and I want to put some elements of what is the situation now and what we can wait uh, there. The, what's happening now, uh, it's, a little, it's a little question uh, because we have a new government and the, gov and the government that there is a left government and there is a discussion what now is our position what is the position of this movement of solidarity structures when, when we have a left government and I will give you an example the first law of the Syriza government was the law for the humanitarian crisis uh, it, uh, it had food and it had some money to be given to the very poor people, very, very poor. The, the solidarity structures for more than two or three years now, they are wor working in this field. They, we have collective kitchens, we give food to the people, and so on. Uh, are they a part <coughs> of this distribution? Uh, a, a collective kitchen can take food from the state and give it to the, to the people? This is a question because there is no legal status and we fight that the social struct the structures uh, to, ha to, to be recognized for the state. We don't want the church to have the possibility to do that and the people that they did that for three years every day do not have the possibility to do that. But in the other hand, they all, all these years they worked as part of a movement they were speaking about participation and they don't want to be just s some groups that they deliver the aid that comes from the state so there is a discussion what is the role now we had to make a national assembly to discuss all uh, these things uh, in the, in the second, there are the, the problems, there are still there. Uh, before I come, about two weeks, the, 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 what was happening in Greece? It was a company that, uh, a, a company that had ships and abandoned ships inside the sea. They didn't put oil. Uh, they didn't give the, the people that were working in the ships their salary. So there was one ship in the island of Mytilini, there was one ship in Samos, one ship in Lavrion, one ship in Piraeus. And the people, they had no money, and they were sleeping inside the ship, and they were abandoned. What to be done? Because uh, they wanted to close uh, this company, or to blackmail, to take other roots with more money and the people were were sleeping with with the rats this is the truth and we had to find the shelter and to find where uh, where they will get food for, for doing this we had to cooperate we had to cooperate uh, and the ministry and what happened in the ministry the minister 
and the general secretary were our comrades, were our comrades from before. We know them years in the social movements. When they wanted, what is happening with this company to the other mechanism of, of their ministry? Ca can you tell us what is going on with this company? What, what's happening with the sailors? Nobody was giving the details, <coughs> nobody was giving the history. So we must, we, we made the meeting, it was the general secretary of the ministry, it was the worker uh, uh, center of Piraeus, and it was solidarity for all, trying to find food and a place for the people to stay, for, um, uh, because even the ministry didn't have the money to, to give and the way to give the money to the people uh, that they were uh, in this bad situation. What I want to say is that the problem, they are still there. Maybe there is uh, what uh, it's happening in the political level, in the, in the discussions with the European Union and in the IMF, but these people created for four years a, a war machine against the working class and the poor people. And the problems are still there. And the, the, the devastation was so big that if you want to overturn it, you must create a movement for this. You can't do it just with degrees and just with laws and just with uh, this reason, because it was very big, it was very deep. What happened in Greece is very deep. And the problems there are there in every, every day, because there are thousands of households uh, who are in debt with electricity. There are 1,700,000 people that they are out of work in a workforce that was 4 million people. This means that half about the working class of Greece is out of the work, and we don't count in this measure <coughs> the immigrants, and uh, uh, who must be more than 700, uh, and especially in the, in the production. So this means that you, you have a society that in the base of the society, uh, you had a great attack in this and uh, it's, it's not very easy to overturn it. Uh, so, I don't know uh, because many people ask what will happen in Greece. The only thing I can say is that this is a fight. What happened in Greece is a fight. It keeps to be a fight even after no, no was great, was great for us, <coughs> but the everyday problems are there. In my opinion, it is a fight so crucial like Spain in 36, in my opinion. For what happened in Spain, uh, it was crucial what happened in Europe in the world after. If they win in Greece, the IMF, the, the politics of, of capitalism, let's say, uh, they will change the situation in all Europe and in all world. So it's very important to stop them there. Uh, this is the reason we need the help of every trade unionist in the world. Uh, we want your support in any way. And the best way to have your support is not to allow it to happen in your country what happened in Greece. Because you will not believe it. If you are in a society, you think, oh, what's happening here? It can't be happened what, what happened in Greece. It's not true. Greece was a rich country, was 27. And from 
in one year, we, we saw images in Athens that we couldn't think that we, we could see uh, these images. So the, the first and the last thing I want to say in that direction is give the good fight not to allow them to pass even from Greece, even in your uh, countries. I know it's been an exhausting day for you all, um, but I'm sure that you have found what Dakaris had said is very interesting and hopefully some inspiration for you back in your own countries. But we've got some opportunity for questions. We are at time now, so it's really open to yourselves. So I think there was a gentleman at the front here who had his hand up. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to ask this um, back at the beginning, but I didn't know the scope of your, your presentation. Um, for some of us non Europeans, it's kind of uh, something that's, let's say, out of context. It would have been great, or if you can still do that, to give us a brief background of why this is where it is today. Um, some of us, the issue of the Greek crisis is something that has been, it was kind of critical. It's only recently that we started developing interest in what's happening in Greece. Were you late? Were you late in? <laughs> Were you late in from the tour? I were, were you late here for the? Did you arrive after she's already spoke? Yeah. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I, I was, okay. I was here, but okay. I didn't get uh, the reason why this is in the, okay. is in the crisis that it is here. Okay. Yes. Do you want to address that? Okay. No, uh, I think that we can collect the questions. Number yeah. of questions over here then as well. We'll come back to that one. Uh, I was just wondering if you can give us a bit more information about where we are with the Golden Dawn. What you described is like you were tired, but, but it's also reminiscent of what happened, you know, for the crisis in 1929, the rise of fascism, and, you know, the, the looming third world, world war that, you know, we may see, maybe already starting, so people would have the title. And then just the second thing is, uh, in terms of what we can do, I mean, you said fight authority in your country, great, but I think it'd be very useful, maybe not right now, but to have like, a series of concrete that we can do and we can take out in our trade unions. And I was also wondering if the government or your network have thought about using crowdfunding to get the funds quickly now to help uh, you know, out your Okay. I think there was one more at the back uh, on my left hand side, is it not? No? Or on the right here at the back then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, two quick things. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me say what I actually. It was a, a very beautiful day for all of us here in the room. But two quick things. One, uh, I know there was internal struggle also recently, Syriza regarding. I was shocked about the public sector federation uh, mobilizing for a yes vote. Uh, where yes, unions could be union bureaucracies could at times. Be uh, conservative, but why? And I want to also have a better view of what does the resignation of the finance minister, where does it sit into all this? And then finally, uh, for me, the, the situation in Greece, I have followed quite closely, partly because um, when we had the general dispute, 2011, 2012, um, struggle in our country, a number of uh, left journals uh, did link up with me, I think through uh, contacts, references, and ran some interviews. And uh, I, I did notice that a number of far left groups, uh, um, apart from KK and Pansia, they, their position basically was, in essence, what the no vote stands for. You know, So I, I want to know if this opens vistas of broadening cooperation within the left in Greece and uh, how that could isolate, I mean, like, for example, the uh, bringing in the, the independents as the party that uh, Syriza is working with, maybe with this no victory could 
put aside such nationalist forces and uh, deepening collaboration with um, left forces mm -hmm. in the course of the working class of Okay, shall we take this to class? Are you ready? Can we start with the background of the crisis? Uh, I think you want can I say, on the, on the background, I think it, we can talk about that later in the week. Okay. Um, there's, a long, there's a long thing. I think really, with all respect, I think it, we, we want to know what's happening now and about the movement you've described. Yeah. We can talk about the causes of this but later in the week. We have the whole week to do. Yeah. So I don't think we need to go into the causes so much. Okay. So, Golden Dawn. I will begin or you have to say something? You begin, I'll finish. Uh, <laughs> the Golden Dawn uh, was not only defeated by the solidarity work. Uh, so the, the Golden Dawn so f for the first, uh, about the, the European and what we discussing, uh, I can't explain, I, I, I'm not in the position to say about that. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm in a position to say my opinion uh, in, in a meeting like that, I think that uh, this experience of uh, one, when a country goes in a crisis that is I bigger than the crisis of 29, it's, it, it's that it doesn't have to do with the Europe or, or this. We have a, 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 a country in a great crisis that changes all the, so the social situation it cuts the salaries about 40 to 50 percent and the pensions and puts out of work half of the people and puts out of the health system three million people i don't think this is something that has to do only with the country only with europe i think it's something very important for someone to focus in the world in the world how this can happen in a world in in a country what resistances we have in a country that this is happening and how these resistances especially a, a very big partner in in social conflict uh, the working movement with new movements that arise inside this situation can collaborate, create victories and uh, open the road for a political victory that what happened and if they keep on fighting to change the thing uh, in the whole uh, social situation. I, I think that there are some important lessons inside. I, I speak for myself because I am in the movement more than 20, 25 years in the unions and all this. And I saw these years things that I, I haven't seen for more than the 20, the 25 years. P uh, things that I was reading in the books and I saw them happening in front of me and in a bigger degree and cli cli climax, uh, in scale, in, in, uh, in a great scale. And I was thinking that never in my life I could see these things. Uh, so the first, I think, it's my personal opinion that there are some in, in, interesting things in the discussion of Greece, the movements and the working class movement. Uh, not concentrated on Europe or in Greece only. The second, uh, the reminiscence of Golden Dawn. The Golden Dawn uh, still is a threat. It is outside. Um, it, it has not the possibility to act, the ability to act, like had some years before, be, be, because it's outlawed now, because their leaders were in the jail, because it was made very profound that they were guiding gangs to uh, attack, especially immigrants, and to kill 
the people and when they kill uh, a singer very beloved to the Greek youth, the Kilapi, who was a rap uh, singer, the, there, there, we could have a riot in Greece like 2008. So the Samaras, who was in the government, understood that if he doesn't thro uh, throw to the jail the Golden Dawn, there will be again 2008 in Greece because the anger was very big that they killed uh, this singer. He was afraid what will happen from below against the Golden Dawn. I, I, I tell you that for two years and more after, if the government didn't begin to close them in jail, we would have classes in Greece every week in the streets and with, I don't know, but uh, uh, so they put them in jail. But what's happening, th this was crucial to, to smash their organization capability. They were not able to work after this. Uh, it is a different city now, Athens, because there were times that you were afraid to walk. I, w I was going to my house. I was in the central uh, street of Athens, and there were many young people with bikes, 50, 60, that they were making, that they were in the streets, and they were uh, uh, making, um, I don't know the, we, hunting, hunting of immigrants. They were, they, they were hunting for immigrants with, uh, and, and the number was what I give you, 50 or 60 bikes with young people. This is what I saw, what I, near my house. And when they were passing from the police, they were saluting one, one another. The police must be there to protect the people. And where they were passing, and they were saying, who here is Pakistan, who here is Albanian, and they were trying to, to, to find who he is to attack him, the police were saluting them. In, uh, for this I say, uh, they, are, they were a big problem. They faced an organizational <coughs> break and problem when they were in jail. But in a society like a Greek society, that um, uh, there are problems uh, left is in government, but has not yet the I, do, the, I don't like the word, hegemony. Hegemony is the right word. The hegemony. Hegemonia in ideas and in the behavior. Because there are 20 years of neoliberalism that everybody sees the other as an enemy, that it doesn't look for the social good. What is social good? What there is is my good, and I don't care about the social good. And this is a, a ground that, the, that fascism can grow very fast because it goes with this, it fits very well with this opinion that you are my enemy and I must hit you. So, and, and, and the other is that they are, um, I think that they are trying illegally to keep um, a mechanism, an organizational mechanism. Uh, so we have things in front of us for, for the fascists. I think we can't, conscious of time, I've got, I wanted to address some of those things from my own perspective and from a perspective outside of Greece. In respect of the public sector trade unions, slow down. sorry, yes, yeah, sorry. In respect of the public sector trade unions' involvement in the crisis and the austerity measures, I was shocked by this. Being a public sector trade unionist myself, I worked for Unison. I met with uh, one of the um, leaders of the Labour Institute, I won't say who, but uh, <coughs> she said to me that it was necessary for some of these reforms to take place <coughs> because there was an overblown public sector. And so they 
saw and recognised that it was important for them to lose some jobs and to lose some terms and conditions. And I sat there and I couldn't, I did, it was almost as if we were <coughs> speaking another language. I said to her, I was, I, she asked me about what I thought about Athens and when I saw, and I said, on the first sight, when you go to Athens, it's very beautiful. The streets are very clean. My rubbish was being collected <coughs> three times a day. Not once every other week, as in this country, but three times a day they would come and collect the rubbish. There seemed to be a lot of people still working in the state, but this was all a perception. Because if you looked underneath it, and if you got outside of the centre of Athens, into the suburbs, and you saw the number of shops and offices and buildings that were closed and run down, and you saw the people begging in the streets, and you saw the children who were hungry, then you could see what was really happening, for what was happening in public services. And so I said to this person in Athens, I said, I came and I had to cross literally over a woman who was sleeping outside her offices. She had set up her house in a little alcove of the building and had there her beds and had an area where her clothes were. And it was almost like a layout of an apartment outside in the streets. And I said, how can this be in Greece? And she says, this is her choice. She chooses to live there. This is her choice. She could go to a refuge <coughs> if she wanted to, but it's her choice. Now, as we know, if you cut public services, you cut the public sector, you cut the refuges, you cut the support to those refuges. It's dangerous to go into a refuge for a woman on her own. She's probably safer on the streets than she is. So I was shocked about the public sector in, in union involvement in this. The second thing I wanted to say was in respect of the cooperation on the left. I think the trade union movement is in <coughs> crisis, has been in crisis for a long time, and we have to renew, we have to rebuild, we have to find new ways of having this collaboration with other organisations like Solidarity for All, or with the Green Movement, or with those people who stand against cuts. We have to collaborate together and we need to unify the left. It is too much of a crisis for us to be divided. And that's what I am hoping to work on. Otherwise, the trade unions will become like zombies. They will still exist, but they will not be doing what we have to do to be able to create change. And the final point I wanted to say is what can you do in terms of supporting organisations like Solidarity for All um, and, and other organisations that are vital? You can affiliate to organisations like this. You can provide donations. You can go back to your country and do some fundraising and help, or in your own country, find, uh, a, a create solidarity organisations like this. Yes, we can do crowdfunding, but the crucial thing that I think that has really shaped the way that we do our collaboration is social media. So make sure you get in contact with Solidarity for All, and make sure that you send the messages around, because it's social media that is now providing such a vital backdrop for our solidarity international and within our own countries. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you so much, both of you. Is there a chance you're going to be able to come back before the end of the summer school? I think yes. 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 Good. Because yes. I think there's a lot of questions. It's getting late. We, we let the. the but there's a lot the of discussion bar. to be had. Going to the bar because I think this is a yeah, great discussion. I think our follow-up questions. If there's any chance of yeah. buying you a drink. We're here overnight, so we'll be here back in the morning as well right, until good. about lunchtime. Good. All right. Yeah. So fine. Um, so are you going to join us for a drink at the bar? <laughs> Very good. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. We thank uh, you so much. It's been a long afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.